In this video, I'll walk you through a basic photo edit using Affinity Photo. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.1. Here's our image. The main things I'd like to accomplish with this edit is to dull and darken the green of the leaves and to bring out the drain pipe, making it more prominent. A true-to-life representation is not a concern. First order of business is subduing the greens a little. I'll add a Selective Color Adjustment by clicking on the Adjustments icon down here and choosing Selective Color from the menu. From the Color drop-down at the top, I'll choose Greens. You may notice something odd here. We've selected Green, but there's no Green Color Slider, only Cyan, Magenta, Yellow, and Black. How is this going to work? Have a look at this color wheel. We have green and directly opposite is magenta. Colors opposite each other on the color wheel are complementary to each other. So green and magenta are complementary colors. Increasing the amount of magenta will decrease the amount of green and vice versa. So here on the selective color dialog, I'll increase the amount of magenta and that'll dampen the green in the photo. Selective color is a subtle adjustment, so the effect is not strong. Back to the color wheel, and you can see that yellow is right next to green. That means yellow and green are analogous colors. Decreasing the amount of yellow will also decrease the amount of green, and the opposite is true. Increasing yellow will also increase green. So here on the Selective Color dialog, I'll turn down the yellow. I'll turn the Selective Color adjustment off and on so you can see the effect it's had. Does all this mean you need to refer to the color wheel every time you use the selective color adjustment? No, of course not. That's just by way of explanation. You can play with the sliders until you get the result you're after. Now let's darken the stone wall a little. I'll select reds from the color dropdown because experience tells me there's some red there in the wall. Moving the black slider at the bottom to the right a bit will achieve the desired result. Now I want to add a tad of red to warm up the wall. Back to our color wheel. Cyan and red are complementary, that is they're opposite each other on the wheel. So decreasing cyan a bit will slightly increase the amount of red. I'll move the cyan slider a little to the left. That looks good. Let's darken the yellows a bit as well. As you can see, yellow is present in both the wall and the leaves. I'll choose yellow from the drop-down and move the black slider at the bottom a little to the right. Okay, we're done with Selective Color, so I'll close it. I'll turn it off and on. The green has been dampened and the brick wall has a warmer tone. To help the drain pipe stand out, I'll add a brightness and contrast adjustment. Clicking on the Adjustments icon, I'll select Brightness and Contrast. I'll slightly increase both the brightness and contrast. That has affected the entire image, but I want to limit the effect to the drain pipe only. We'll do that by applying an empty mask to the Brightness and Contrast Adjustment layer. An empty mask will render the effects of the Brightness and Contrast Adjustment invisible but we'll use a white brush to allow its effect to show through on the drain pipe only. With masks, white reveals and black conceals. With the brightness and contrast adjustment layer selected, select new empty mask layer from the layer menu. Expand the brightness and contrast adjustment to make sure the mask is selected. Now select the paintbrush tool. Set its color to white if it's not white already by clicking over here. Now make sure flow and opacity are both 100% and hardness is zero. A hardness of zero makes for a soft brush outline as opposed to a sharp outline. Let's paint over the drain pipe to allow the brightness and contrast adjustments effect to show through. You can use the square bracket keys to adjust the size of the brush if need be. 
To help bring out the drain pipe even more, I'll add a shadows and highlights adjustment. I'll bring the shadows down and increase the highlights. Let's add an empty mask to this adjustment as well to limit its effect to the drain pipe. Again, with the shadows and highlights adjustment layer selected, choose new empty mask layer from the layer menu. Let's expand it to make sure the mask is selected and paint on the drain pipe again. I want to darken the background, so I'll add another brightness and contrast adjustment. I'll reduce the brightness slightly. I only want the background darkened, so this time I'll apply a mask to the brightness and contrast adjustment. A mask allows whatever it's applied to to show through, so it won't have any effect on our image. But I'll use a black brush to paint over the drain pipe. That will render the brightness and contrast adjustments effect invisible over the drain pipe only. With the brightness and contrast adjustment layer selected, I'll click on the mask icon down here to apply the mask. Making sure the mask is selected, I'll change the brush color to black by clicking over here and paint over the drain pipe. All right. Now let's sharpen up the ornate design on the drain pipe. We'll add a high pass live filter layer. Click on the live filters icon and select high pass from the drop down. Let's zoom right in by pressing command plus or control plus in windows. I'll move the radius slider to the right. I'm going to be really heavy handed with this. Normally, I'd use a radius of one pixel only. We don't want too much of a haloing effect. Right about there will do. Zoom back out by pressing Command-0 or Control-0 on Windows. Let's change the blend mode to Overlay. I'll apply an empty mask to the high pass filter layer and paint in its effect on the ornate design only. Change the brush color back to white and adjust the slider for a pure white. Let's finish off with a gradient to darken the bottom of the photo. From the Layer menu, select New Fill Layer. If the new fill layer is not white, change it to white by clicking up here. The Gradient tool is automatically selected when you add a fill layer, so I'll just pull it out with the mouse. I'll set the Gradient Type to Radial up here for a more natural look. And I'll change the blend mode of the fill layer to multiply. Let's zoom out so we have more room to work. Plus Command minus or Control minus in Windows. I'll adjust the gradient. Let's get back to normal by pressing Command or Control zero. And I'll lower the opacity. If you need to adjust the gradient later, just select the fill layer and then select the gradient tool. Nothing here is etched in stone, by the way. You can continue making adjustments to all the layers. Okay, let's select all the layers we've added. Holding down the shift key, select the layers. Now let's turn them off and on to see what we've accomplished. quite a transformation. I hope this has given you an idea of some of the things you can do when editing your own photos. Thank you for watching.